consider the calendar, administrative calendar, then the public comment section. Uh, before we do anything else, I would call on Councilman Ed Ambrosino to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Put your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Madam Clark, can you call the roll, please? Supervisor Santino. I'm sorry. Here. It's okay. Councilman okay. Ambrosino. Here. Councilman Blakeman. Here. Councilman Diaz-Fazito. Here. Councilman Dunn. Here. Councilman Goosby. Here. Councilman King Sweeney. Here. Okay. Uh, call for silence, please. Proposed local law regarding regulations and restrictions <laughs> to limit parking in Baldwin, Belmont, East Meadow, Franklin Square, Garden City Sound, and Merrick. Is there anyone who would like to be heard on any of these matters? There being none, I will let for motion, please. Mr. President, we're going to turn to be closed and the item is off. Second. Request to Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Boosby. Aye. Councilman King-Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Proposed local law regarding parking or standing prohibitions in Belmore, East Meadow, Lawrence, Merrick, North Belmore, North Valley Street, Oceanside, Uniondale, and Wanta. So I would like to be heard on this matter. You may not let for motion, please. Motion to close the proposal of the law adopted. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz Fazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Goosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Proposed local law regarding arterial stops in Baldwin Harbor, Belmore, Bethpage, Elmond, Franklin Square. Inwood, Lido Beach, Oceanside, and Wanta. So we'd like to be heard on any of these matters. To be now accept the motion, please. Right, there are no that the candidate closed and the item adopted. Second. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Goosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Proposed local law regarding traffic regulations in the vicinity of schools in North Belmore, Seaford, and Wanta. So we would like to be heard on any of these matters for the town board. They may not accept the motion. Second. Supervisor Santino. Right. Councilman Ambrosino. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Goosby. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Proposed local law regarding bus stops in East Meadow. Is there anyone who would like to be heard on this matter before the town board? <coughs> there being none, I'll accept the motion, please. Motion here to close, and I have adopted. Second motion. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. <coughs> Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Goosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Proposed local law regarding loading zones in East Meadow. Your Honor, would like to be heard on this matter before the town board. The big nine hours, second motion, please. Motion, please. Second motion. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Goosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Proposed handicap parking on public streets in East Atlantic Beach, Elmont, Franklin Square, Garden City, South, Merrick, North Valley Street, Oceanside, and Uniondale. Uh, is there anyone like to be on this matter for the there being none, I accept the motion. I move that the public hearing is closed and that the item is adopted. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Aye. 
Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Gooseby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. On the decision calendar. On the decision calendar, Supervisor, we have application of Penn Collision Inc. for special exceptions, public garage, to maintain a public garage on a larger lot, to utilize a portion of parcel two for the purpose of parking and storage of vehicles awaiting repair in connection with, it, with its automotive repair shop on parcel one in Baldwin. A motion, please. Is there a second? Second. Supervisor Santino. <laughs> Councilman Epposito. <laughs> Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Bazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Boosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Next item on the decision calendar is application of AMPM Food Mart Inc. for inclusion within GSL's district to include existing gasoline service station and install two underground storage tanks, each with a capacity of 12,000 gallons, and operate a convenience store and self-service station in Roosevelt. A motion, please. So moved. Second. Move it up, right? Move it up, yes. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Gooseby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Next item, please. Application of Global Montello Group Corp for rezoning from LPRD to Business District in Levittown. Supervisor, I have a companion decision. Application of Global Montello Group Corp for a permit to include an existing gasoline service station within GSS district to remove, recovery, regrade, and replace pump aisles and gasoline dispensers with new pump aisles and dispensers, erect a canopy over pump aisles, and operate a serving a convenience store in congestion with gasoline and operate self serving station in Levittown. Do I have a motion, please? Do I have a motion? Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosio. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Fazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Boosby. Okay, on the administrative calendar, does any member of the board wish to sever any of the items on the administrative calendar? Yes, Mr. Supervisor, I would like to sever items number 4 and 22. Okay. Uh, can I have a uh, motion on the uh, administrative calendar with the exception of the items that have been set up? I move the administrative uh, calendar in its entirety, exception of the two that were set up on the board on the 22th. Okay. Um, I guess then we should also then probably put, uh, well, okay, we'll deal with the, uh, we'll deal with the item that's before us at the moment. And then we'll back to those. Okay. Mr. Felix Percacci. You know what, I think what we're going to do technically so that we actually have it in front of us uh, on the calendar. Then I have the two items that have been uh, severed. We will vote on them separately and deal with them separately, but uh, I'll accept a motion on item number four. I make it. Is there a second? Okay, and then I will need then a motion. So that's uh, Councilman Diaz-Pazito moved it, Councilman Dunn seconded it. And then on item number 22, I will need a motion to put it before us. I make a motion. Okay. So, okay. Mr. Picacci, you're up. So, what can I do? 
book on 478022. Is there anything separate? Yeah, we're going to vote on the seven. I'm not going to talk about anything else. Okay. Um, resolution number four out of Felix Bocacci, 1165 Bond Street, Franklin Square, New York. Um, the resolution states, whereas it has become necessary to amend said schedule. Um, why has it become necessary to amend said schedule? Mr. Denver? There's going to be an installation of council persons who were recently elected. And so it was thought best not to have a meeting on that day since it's going to be an installation day as so as not to mislead the public to think that they were coming to a regular town board meeting. Okay. So there will not be a town board meeting on that day. Yeah, and for, the, for the record, um, the supervisor-elect has requested that um, the meeting be held on January 2nd, but in the evening at 7 p.m., uh, and that her installation would be sometime that same day, separate and apart from the meeting. So I'm going to make a motion with respect to that when we get to it. But I just wanted to let you know that that was her request, and I believe that we should adhere to it. Okay. Now, the, um, the last two uh, supervisor elections, 2016 and 2014, it was a on the calendar, and even we had a stenographer here. Why are we doing something different than what we had done in the past? Because on those two occasions, we had some complaints that said that there was coming to a town board meeting, and the first thing you do is cancel the agenda, cancel the regular uh, meeting agenda, and, and I had to sit and listen to speeches. So it was thought just not to mislead the public to just have a um, an installation. Okay. Um, on item number seven, um, CSB net, um, I dealt with that guy, Brian Donovan, um, when I was trying to get answers and I tried to deal with Arthur Prim, but he doesn't return phone calls either. Um, the videos I received from, that are operated and maintained by CSB net, they were cut to shreds. I mean, five minutes missing, that's ridiculous. I don't care motion sensitive or not, people would appear out of nowhere. There's something wrong with the way they're maintaining those cameras, and I feel very strongly you should not hire them again, and you should not renew their contract. Kick it down the road and let the next uh, supervisor do it, because I'll tell you now, I had downloaded maybe 20 hours of video, and every one of them was in shreds, and Ryan said he was going to call me back, he never called me back, I couldn't get answers from all the print. There's something wrong with the way those cameras are being operated. If that's for security, it's not secure so who knows what it's going to record on item number eight it's not specific as to the various computer courses that the town is paying for with this resolution can someone tell me what those computer courses are uh, dr clock please i am Yeah, these computer classes are for technical employees to keep up with technology. <laughs> what technology is always? What's the, what's the name of the course? It's any, you know, we can go to Excel, Access, we can go SQL, .NET, any kind of... Oh, okay. Um, being the, 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 those, those, okay, those examples, I, I sign up regularly for Udemy. You got me set, I got a 70-hour course for $15. I could watch it as many times as I want. It's lifetime access. I, I could do it any time on my phone. Well, I don't have a phone that I could do it, but I could if I had one. But the thing is, you, you, could, do, uh, you could watch it any time of the day and take courses for a lot less money than what you're paying for. For a couple hundred dollars, you get a ton of courses. You don't need this excessiveness for Excel and for Word and for SQL. There's plenty of videos. Go to Udemy.com and look it up. Don't pass this resolution. You're going to be fiscally responsible. Look at the alternatives. Look at the alternatives. They're excellent. And you get to preview the course. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee on your $15, too. 
So, I mean, that's, I think it's a really good deal as opposed to spending the thousands of dollars that are in here. Because I keep up with technology too, so I, I, I can relate to this. Don't spend the money. Okay. Um, the next one is number 22. Thank you so much. Um, number 22, the Inspector General thing. That's, uh, it was much better now. I, I like it much better than it was from last time. But I, I, know, I know the day. I know it's about the day. I know it's about the day. But you see the yellow, the pink sticky notes here. I found a lot of things that need to be desired. So I think you should put this off and because it still needs some work. And I think it's best that you put this off so we can make it, we can address all these. I can't address it in five minutes, even on December 12th, I won't be able to address all these. And I think that when you're going into something, you should go into something to get it the best you can get it, get as many inputs as you can, and then go on it, as opposed to trying to change it later. Changing things later is always a bad idea. Make the changes before you go to be here. I think it's a great idea to do it that way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Valerie Lamb. talking about. Um, I call it Udemy, but I forgot what he said it's called, Udemy. Great site. You could definitely save a ton of money by having employees access that education. And they're very credible resources. Each instructor has uh, their different appropriate um, qualifications. And I've taken several courses off that too. They're $10, they're $30. You can even find some stuff on Groupon. So, I, I think that's a great idea, Felix. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Item number four, uh, the canceling of uh, this meeting. Um, I, look, it's a hard pill to swallow. I do recognize that, uh, you know, the township of Hempstead has been under the same regime for over 100 years. I know what you're going to say, it's due to the fact that you guys received complaints uh, from people who came to a prior year and felt deceived or something, but honestly, that doesn't really wash because there's been a lot of deceptive information coming from this township and to all of a sudden heed uh, these complaints from, uh, all, I guess, a large amount of people who showed up at a meeting expecting to have a town meeting and instead we're walking into a ceremony to welcome in the new elects or, or the re-elected officials. I mean, come on. <laughs> I just think as, as we are looking for bipartisan leadership, and we're excited about it, right? I am, anyway. That we all are. We all are. Okay. So I, I want to let you know, this is just how I feel. What it looks like is it's some kind of last minute shenanigan to try to take away a, a tradition and I'm right. I mean, you've been reelected. You were reelected. You were reelected. Other people didn't run. And we have a new incoming clerk. We have a new incoming supervisor. You know, let them have their moment. I mean, you have this small, great opportunity to walk out with some dignity and grace and class. Let them have it. Let them have the ceremony. Don't cancel the meeting. I, I highly doubt there's going to be like a Black Friday stampede of people suddenly want to come to the meeting and they're going to feel deceived. If anything, I felt deceived a couple of meetings ago when I was here for five or seven hours and then with a very sudden eruption there was a walkout and all the people that waited for their chance to speak to our representatives was just ripped out from under us. That's deception, okay? Letting this, letting this meeting happen and not having this sudden delay of game, I mean, just let it happen. Uh, Ms. Glenn, I think yes. a good idea would be we have the um, a ceremony during the day and then a night meeting. Agreed. Um, Agreed. So but don't cancel it. Don't cancel it. And please, please, don't insult everyone's intelligence saying that you have this sudden concern for the complaints of the residents of the town. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that they felt deceived. I mean, that's, it's kind of comical. I do want to send this into SNL, but I'll work on that separately. Anyway, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Rory Gordon. Rory Gordon, Hop Hop, New York. As far as uh, the installation, whatever you decide, is it going to be like the last time by invitation only? Mm -hmm. Yes? Well, why is that? The first of all, because most of us have families and people who want to come and see us and work with us, so that all these so many spaces in here, and you'll see it's going to be packed. So it's not what you suggest to anybody, it's for us. I think any kind of isolation anywhere that happens, doesn't it? I have no idea. That's why I'm asking the question. I really don't know. Has an isolation of the county does, the council, they do it in the federal government, the state government, so forth. They invite people to come. Okay. I, I just want to ask. But am I mistaken? I think there was a TV outside where the public could come. Maybe I missed that. I think there was a... Oh, I believe. Mr. Town Attorney, would you just expand on that? There will be invitations uh, by each of... There, there could be as many as five people being inducted on that day. So there will be invitations sent out by each of them who are going to be installed that day. And that generally takes up the room. There is a TV outside in the, in the um, hallway out, out there where, where members of the public could watch. And certainly if there were room in the pavilion, members of the public could come in. Oh, okay. Uh, is it going to be on the televised thing? Yes. Is that yes? I said yes. <laughs> sorry. I know you're talking. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, as far as the company with the uh, surveillance system, number seven, I have an issue with that company. I requested tapes, and I never received them. And that request went through Peter Sullivan, directly to me, Mr. Rock. We're still waiting to this day to get them. Now, how would we rehire this company when they do not produce surveillance camera tapes is beyond me in a federal litigation. To me, they're incompetent. And I just want to put in my two cents because they are getting paid an extraordinary amount of money. Did this go out for bid? Can you stop the clock? Um, is the program, I think. The state contract. State contract. What does that mean in English? I'm sorry. It was made by the state of New York, and the state of New York gave mis mis municipalities the right to order off of the state contract. So the state of New York bid. State of New York bid, so that means we're stuck with this organization? As, as no, the state of New York gave the municipalities the right, if they wanted to, to utilize the, the contract. Uh, so if this, you have a choice to use it or not use it? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't understand. You can, if, the, if the, the department thought the price was good or it was desirable and the materials and the equipment is what they want, they look it's cheaper many times to order off the state contract. And that's what the decision here was, to order off the state contract. It is a bid, but it's ordered off the state contract. The state of New York bid. Okay, so we have Felix saying that they're incompetent, and I'm telling you for a fact, I know they're incompetent, yet, yet the state of New York somehow gave them a bid. They're incompetent too. But I, I don't know, don't you think we have a right as constituents to complain? <coughs> Mr. Rock? Do you have a right to complain? Yeah. You can make a complaint about anything you want to complain about. 
But who do I can make this complaint to? I think you're doing it now. Okay, well, it's not giving me an answer. You, you, it's a really an answer. Yeah, it's, it's a state contract. It was, you want to know if it was big. It was big by the state of New York. And the state of New York, under the laws of the state of New York, gave the municipalities throughout the state of New York the right to utilize the contract. So it's a done deal. There's no changing it. We're stuck with this company that's totally incompetent as far as Felix and I have had experiences. Is that, is that what you're saying? We're stuck with that? I wouldn't use that terminology. Well, what terminology would you use? We're, we're entering into a contract with a successful bidder on a state contract. So you guys are going to make a vote to decide whether to continue this contract? Or it's, it's, it's done? It, it's on the calendar tonight for a vote. Okay. Can we ask the IT commissioner if he's happy with that? I'm sorry? Can we ask the IT commissioner if he's happy with their services? Well, how would you feel if you asked the tapes that you didn't get? No, no, I'm just saying, can we, Mr. Roth, can you? Is the IT, is the IT commissioner here? He was just here a minute ago. Yeah, we're very happy with them, yes. You're very happy with them. And how come I didn't get my tapes? <laughs> can somebody answer that question? I have a federal litigation against this town, and I asked the tapes of your employee that was totally disrespectful to me, and I never got the tapes. And you're going to continue with this company? I really have a problem with that. And why are the tapes chopped up? You didn't answer Felix's question. Everybody doesn't know? Or is there something fluky going on? Well, well, that doesn't surprise me. We're talking about the town I have here. And uh, I do have a question. What are the lights outside for? <laughs> the movie. There's a movie being filmed, being shot, um, to yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's lovely. Is the town getting paid? Yes. What, how much is they getting paid? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, who knows the answer? Who knows the answer? Who knows the answer? Who knows the answer? It's not the administrative calendar. Mr. Deary, the question is the fee that the town is charging for the movie shoot. Yes. I believe it's somewhere between $11,000 and $12,000. That's terrific. I'm glad you have put that deal together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, those who have, uh, are the ones who have asked to speak on the administrative calendar, so now uh, we will um, move on and we will um, vote on those items that have not been severed. So we're not, so on all items other than four and no, no, no. You told me. Okay, there's no slip, but on the administrative calendar. Okay. Uh, we started the meeting before I had time to go through the list, so it impacted my taxes. I did put taxes in the I figured I covered the basis. Most of this is paid with tax dollars, I believe. So, Mina Meredith, Paul, and resident. And, um, Yes, let's start with number four. Most of the initial issues have been addressed. My concern is that why are we just amending this for the removal of a heat if we have an opportunity to amend this to include more evening meetings, which was a clear bone of contention when this calendar was set. And I was basically told that because um, one of the board members um, felt that and this is a direct quote, no one would come, um, there was no need to increase the number of evening meetings, which I'm hoping that the residents who are in the room this evening um, would attest to the fact that they might be more interested in coming to more of these board meetings where it's important for their voices to be heard because more money is coming out of their pocket if we have more than three meetings in the evening. Is anybody out there in agreement with me? So I would hope that um, we could remove that one or at least revise that uh, friendly amendment or however Mr. Rob feels that it could be done to support that. But, you know, with past history, you're going to do what you want to do anyway. We pretty much know what the vote split is going to be, so this is probably wasted words. So I just put it out there. Um, number 
8. Item number 8, accepting proposal for various computer training courses. I, I do have a, a question about that, and again, with the vetting process and the outreach, because I am still concerned as to the various and sundry connections, family relationships, contractual agreements, and the golden parachutes that many of you may be displaced when the new administration comes in, the consulting jobs that will, you know, may be set up for you indirectly before this administration leaves. So it's just a general question. Don't really expect an answer because, again, I know past history. Number 11, again, the vetting process that I have uh, with regard to this particular contractor. Um, again, if someone has the documentation to ensure those of us in the public who have very little trust in the integrity of the majority of the processes that have been taking place, and the town of Hempstead as evidenced by the most recent election, that we need to have a little more transparency with regard to who has relationships directly and indirectly with these companies that's getting a, what I would guess is a significant contract if they're going to be addressing seven buildings because the majority of the buildings in the town in Nassau County are toxic, both in some of the people who work there as well as some of the elements <laughs> that are in them, take it from one with health conditions, and I can determine that quickly. Number 12, H2M architects and engineers, I'm pretty sure, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that they are a significant donor. They've done a lot of business in the town and the county. And again, I'm hoping that someone in earshot is uh, going to be scrutinizing this again with regard to the vetting process. And 13, would like to know where's the list of these occupations and positions? Are they going to then be moved to protected classes? Um, this seems to be a lot of this changing and amending that's going on. If you felt comfortable with your budget and things that you passed before when the voting public had no, you know, our voices were not being heard, it seems to me that it, there's a lot of like shifting around that I just don't feel comfortable with. I am 21, <sighs> calling for a public hearing. Again, this issue with regard to the increased facilities and authorizing districts to issue re refunding bonds. That means there are projects that are on hold, and after a lengthy discussion that a number of us were a part of yesterday in the county with regard to refunding bonds, I think that residents need to know that these projects have been put on hold and that you're looking to get some kind of protection on the bonds that have been issued. But we have residents, again, who have projects in their communities that have been on hold, I would gather, for at least a year or two. So I'm just confused as to how this is particularly going to be impacted, but I guess it's just talking about Hicksville for the moment. And 22, this seems to be an issue that was buried weeks ago, and we feel this is a watered-down version and it should be up to the new administration to fully investigate the type of individual that we think would be best to address the needs of those in this Thank you town. very much, Mr. You're very welcome. Okay, now we will, uh, on, on an item on the administrative town. Okay, did you please, uh, I'm not aware of what the particular uh, commissioner is being very good here. Deputy Commissioner of Pennsylvania. Dr. Carlock. Do we know the specific? Uh, well, I mean, one is a broken uh, DVR recorder. One is a broken desk chair. Uh, <laughs> broken office equipment. Uh, it was no, no, it's no, uniform. No, we don't. I have no value. No, there's nothing to worry about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would you please now call the roll of the items that have not been subbed? Supervisor Santino. All right. Councilman Nevercino. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Boosby. Aye. Councilman Hugh Sweeney. Um, 
Yes, on all items except um, I abstain on items 8 through 13. I am heartened that there's a renewed interest in the Inspector General resolution, but I will abstain on these items involving the expenditure of town funds until we're able to um, resolve that hopefully in the coming weeks and months. So yes, except for abstention on 8 through 13. Okay. Now on uh, item number four, which is the relative to the town board meeting removing January 2nd. Mr. Supervisor, I yes, move that item four be amended as follows, that the installation of the elected officials commencing in the year 2018 be held on January 2nd at 2.30 p.m., that's Coast Meridian, at Camp Anchor in Lido Beach, New York, Town of Hempstead, and that following that at 7 p.m., that the meeting of the town board take place on that day for a number of reasons. One is that uh, I think we should give deference to the new supervisor who was requested that the meeting be held on the second. Uh, I think that having the first meeting of the new administration at night uh, sets a tone that she would like to set for her administration. And I think that uh, having the installation at Camp Anchor, a much larger facility, facility than this, would accommodate not only the invited guests, but the general public. And I think also that sets a good tone and having it at one of the finest uh, programs in the United States that we're all proud of here in the town of Hempstead at Camp Anchor. That's my motion. Is there a second? Yes, second. Do any members of the town board wish to comment now on this amendment? Yeah, I, I wish to um, echo Councilman Blakeman's um, remarks. Um, the um, supervisor-elect deserves um, her um, opportunity to have her um, installation and a town board meeting as she sees fit, and I agree that it's a good idea to have it in the evening, and I strongly support it. I will not support that. First of all, we have our meetings conditionally, traditionally at 10 a.m. in the morning. I've already made arrangements for that. I have family coming in. They're coming and they're going to leave. They will not be here for the evening. They will be here in the evening. We are part. We're going to have to party. So I don't see why we have to change this just because she wants to change it. We're the town board. The other town board. Oh. Please, please show whether you agree with what whether you agree with what a member of the board is saying or not. Please show some decorum and respect. I'm so happy that we don't have children here listening to you. But I'm going to say it again. I really think we should continue with the tradition of 10 a.m. because that is what I'm accustomed to. That is what this, this town has always done. I know this is the first time she's been here. It was the first time when I came too. It was the first time. It was the first time when I came. <clears throat> but so therefore, I am in disagreement with it because I want to have it 10 o'clock so I can continue with my plans for myself and my family and friends. Councilor, uh, let, let's maintain some good order and I, I, I'm still here so let's run the meeting through the chair. If there's any member who hasn't spoken, we'll get to everybody, any member who hasn't spoken yet on, and we're on the amendment, which would be a change from what's on the council. Anyone else? We've heard from senior yeah, council. You know, I uh, I would be happy, and I look forward to joining uh, supervisor like Gillen at Camp Anchor. Um, but I will support uh, the resolution that's at hand. So uh, I have a I have a question. The original. Um, I understand uh, Councilwoman Gooseby's um, family plans, and I I respect them. Could we agree on a compromise and get a consensus that? It not be held in the meeting, but that we have the installation and the um, board meeting on the same day? No, you're saying you're taking up the whole day. Well, that's traditionally what we've done. No, no, we have not. We have not. You have not been here. We have not. We have been here. I was coming for you. You have been here. I have an argument. I'm just telling you what I think, what I want, and that's it. Okay. We've heard from. We have heard from both sides of the issue. So now, 
The vote we're going to take now, Mr. Tendren, correct me if I'm wrong, is on Councilman Blakeman's amendment. So that's the vote. Please call the roll. Supervisor yeah. Santino. No. Councilman Ambrosino. No. Councilman Blakeman. Yes. Councilman DiStazito. No. Councilman Dunn. No. Councilman Goosby. No. Councilman King Sweeney. Yes. Okay, now please call the roll on the original resolution. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. No. Councilman DiStazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Goosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Okay, now on item 22, which has been severed. Yes, Mr. Supervisor, I have an amendment that I would like to offer. My amendment is to adjourn uh, this item until January 9th, which is a night meeting, which will afford <laughs> more people an opportunity to be here for a very, very important debate and discussion on what uh, Inspector General uh, we should have here in the town of Hempstead, how we should operate. And I think we need a little more time, but I think there's an opportunity for us to come to a consensus whereby we will all agree and not make it contentious because this is such an important thing that transcends politics. And uh, if the board is inclined to entertain having an Inspector General, I think that's great, but let's get together in between and try to work out the differences between the two um, items that have been offered for Inspector General and also any new ideas and give the public a thorough opportunity to question that and participate. So I would, my motion is to put the Inspector General uh, hearing on for January 9th, a night meeting. Do you think that's number 23, which is 23 or 22? That's 22. 20, no, 9, number 22. Okay, so the, so the, the amendment on 22. 22. Okay, uh, the, that's been, uh, and a motion has been made to amend that item to January the 9th as opposed to December the 12th. Is there a second? I second it. I, um, I, I think it's great that we're talking about an inspector general, compliance officer, whatever you want to call it. I think these are important ethical issues. I think we need to take our time um, to figure out um, what the best approach is. I don't think any of us has all the answers on it. So um, and I've been talking about this since March. I think it's a good idea. I welcome all ideas. And I think it would be sensible to hold off till um, January to have that conversation. Okay, so uh, on the town councilman Blakeman's amendment, please call the roll. Supervisor Santino. No. Councilman Ambrosino. No. Councilman Blakeman. Yes. Councilman Diasposito. No. Councilman Dunn. No. Councilman Gooseby. No. Okay, now please call the roll on the original. I'm oh, sorry, my, my mistake. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, on item 22, as originally written, December the 12th, please call the roll. Supervisor Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. Yes. Councilman Blakeman. No. Councilman Diaz-Pasito. I look forward to hearing from the public on December 12th, and I also look forward over the next couple of weeks uh, to be able to work with our town board members to uh, nail this down. So I vote yes. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Dunn. You know, yes. Councilman Gooseby. Yeah. I'm certainly because I'm very concerned about some of the items that I saw in there that if we, the board themselves, the town board members, did not accept whomever the person is they have in mind, they would take it to give it to someone else, give it away our power so that we would not be able to determine what we need to have. So, excuse me? Please, please allow the senior councilwoman to complete her remarks and vote. Like you know, it's just, I'm But anyway. I will vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Looking sweet. Um, I share Councilman D'Esposito's sentiments that I look forward to hashing this out over the next several weeks. Um, while I wish it would have been pushed off to January, I welcome any conversation and I think it's a good step forward, so yes. Okay. Then uh, now the next order of business is a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. 
Suboise Santino. Aye. Councilman Ambrosino. <coughs> Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman D'Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Councilman Boosby. Aye. Councilman King Sweeney. Aye. Okay. Uh, public comment period, Edward Littman.
and pulled my CL. I have no answer from any town attorney. They keep telling me I've been going to court for over a year, and they tell me they're gonna call us, we're gonna try to sit down and fix this. It's been eight months. Every time it's an adjournment, adjournment, adjournment. We have a uh, trial in December, trying to call the town attorney, and there is no callbacks on this. Um, one other thing is, um, since Anthony D'Exposito came into play here, I believe that he thinks it's his own bank account here, hiring all his friends and family. You have a chief inspector, Gary Gordon, all over Facebook, ripping people apart, making 80000 a year. This is a disgrace as town officials to have these kind of employees employed here. What he has said about families in the village of Island Park, and it's Anthony T. Esposito's best friend. These are what kind of people were employing here. His family and friends. The guy was out on disability for quite some time and he got a job last, maybe eight months ago, nine months ago when he was called in, when he was hired, Anthony, to give Gary Gordon and his whole entire family jobs here. And there's a few others too. Christopher Downs is one of the other guys that are on Facebook with the people of party. He was a part-time employee. As Anthony came in, he became a full-time employee. And Gary Gordon has almost three lawsuits against him since he started with the town Amstead. These are taxpayers' money. These are horrible employees that the town Amstead is hiring. Okay, thank you. Uh, senior council members, uh, quite a personal privilege. Can I just give a thank you to Commissioner Zapola for all his years of service? I understand he is retiring tomorrow. say how thrilled I was to see Councilwoman Sweeney at the animal shelter. I'm the adoption coordinator there. We were thrilled to see her and her family and as well as Supervisor-elect Gillen. I had to check my daughter's pockets to make sure there weren't any kittens in there. <laughs> I'm absolutely, we were thrilled to see you. We were very, very excited about the new direction that the town is going. We certainly hope that you and the other council members will continue to support our mission there. Uh, and we very much look forward to it, but I wanted to say thank you very much for coming to visit us. It was a pleasure to have you, and, and thank you for your support. Thank you. It was great to be there. Thanks. It's a dangerous uh, 
create a dangerous condition that we will we will look up and say you can write to uh, the highway department or you can write to my office. Um, my next question is, is um, with the Island Park Civic Association, and I have left uh, Bill Muller uh, a message. We have emailed him about information on the bus company in Island Park that is still parking illegally, still has their fences up with no permits, um, still has insufficient parking. This is going on for many, many years. I'm aware of it, and I can just tell you where we are in the court case. We made an application for an injunction uh, in front of Justice Karen Murphy. She denied the injunction, and we appealed that to the appellate division. But we did, they, she did deny the uh, injunction. And so we are, pros we are prosecuting the case, and we're very disappointed, which is why we're appealing. And she is aware of all this illegal issues with this bus company? And the right. bus company also got a contract with Nassau County. I mean, I, I think there's something kind of illegal. I, going. I don't. I don't know about the county, the contract with Nassau County. All I can tell you is, we prosecuted. We went to court. We asked for an injunction to stop them from doing what they're doing. Justice Murphy denied that, and we're in the appellate division fighting it. Okay. So, as a concerned resident, um, I'm concerned as a as a civic member. We have five blocks that these people cannot park in front of their houses because they have insufficient parking. So the town of Hempstead should be able to take care of that and of it. Why is it even in Supreme Court? Why is he even allowed to do anything that he's doing when everything is illegal? Mostly insufficient parking. We agree with what you're saying, and which is when you say why is he allowed to do it, He's doing it, we believe, illegally. That's why they build courthouses. That's why we went to court. And Justice Murphy denied the preliminary injunction. And so the only, the only uh, thing that we can do is appeal her decision to the held a higher court to try to get that overturned so we can get an injunction to stop them from doing what they're doing. And would you happen to remember how long ago that was? I don't want to. But I can, I can tell you, I know what's going on a while, but I don't know the exact time frame. So it's over a year ago, so I don't, I don't really think that the town of Hempstead is you know, really doing justice for my community. And I, I wish my councilman would help. Well, I, I would have to disagree with that, Patty. I think that we are working as, as hard as we can. Obviously, it's in uh, the, the judge's hands at this point. The sanitation inspectors and the building inspectors have been uh, more than aggressive at the bus depot. Um, you can believe me or not, that's really your prerogative, but uh, I probably call the sanitation inspector at least three times a week when I'm either coming in or leaving uh, Island Park because of the garbage, because of the fence, and summonses are issued, and at this point, I mean, with short of going in there and putting a padlock on the bus company, which we can't do, uh, we are doing everything in our power to fix this. When was the last summons? I don't have, I mean, I called call last you week, so probably Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, prior to Thanksgiving. Okay, and all this goes to the judge? I don't know how the town attorney's office gets to that information, but... Yeah, those some of those go go to district court and we prosecute them in district court. Okay, thank
Uh, I was at the last meeting and I uh, was requesting that the sign that had uh, been knocked out of my car on my block uh, on the corner of Park Avenue and East Clinton Avenue would be replaced. They did come out, they put the sign up and they put it in the wrong place. <coughs> I called, left a message that it was in the wrong place. They placed it in front of my home, which I already have a sign on the tree, I mean on the telegraph post. Uh, it was supposed to go on the corner. The parking is supposed to be, no parking is supposed to be from my residence, 156 East Clinton Avenue, to the end of the block, which stops at Park Avenue. So I would appreciate that they would come out and put the sign in the correct place. Thank you. House Reed representing Traffic Control Division. Uh, we did investigate this matter, and there was a sign missing according to the parking ordinances that we have on file. And we did correctly put the sign back where it was according to the ordinance. We have no record of any restriction being at the corner of Park Avenue there. But we can investigate it on behalf of the resident by sending them the case number and reviewing the area to see if a restriction is warranted at that location. Well, from the beginning, and, and the <coughs> was there, that sign was at the corner. We have no record of that on our file. That's where it was. It was at the corner <coughs> from, from 156, because it's not supposed to be any parking on, on my side of the block, from my, from my address to the corner. And, and the sign was on the corner. Okay, well, we can fix that and we can accommodate you and do a survey to put the restriction back on the end. But as according to our records, as of now, we have no record of restriction being at that corner. But we can work with you to put the new restriction in. First of all, you're not working with me. See, in the beginning, uh, uh, a councilwoman who came out, the department came out, they did a survey. As a matter of fact, the day that they came out, and the reason why they was, uh, putting this sign up was because on the way to school, there was a lot of traffic and a lot of accidents was happening. As a matter of fact, the day that they agreed to put the sign up, an accident happened. And they put that sign from, from my uh, court, from my driveway to the corner. And Councilwoman Guzman knows this because she approved it and they put that sign in. So I don't know what you have on, on your paper. Your, 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 your I have all the restrictions here for each foot and mm -hmm. so. Well, you're missing that one. <laughs> I can double check it again. Yeah, double check it. And check with Councilwoman Blues because she knows that that sign is supposed to be on the corner of Park Avenue. We have no records. How are we going to do an investigation? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please, Alex. test here now for five years. And you have, I don't know how you select your plumbing board in Hempstead, <laughs> but you have a chairman named Montilly, and then you have another gentleman named Montilly. And any time I've ever come here, there's only two people. So I don't know what a quorum is for your plumbing board or your organization, but I've had multiple issues with Joe, personally. He uh, evidently doesn't care for it. So he made that very known to me. So about a year and a half ago, because I had been doing this for five years, 
So about a year and a half ago, I started to document, uh, take pictures, and uh, pay attention to every detail of what was being done to me. I actually brought the proof. He just said that I just failed this last time because I burned through my lead wire. I you know that's a lot to get into. But what I did, fortunately for me, was I brought a camera and I took pictures. And I didn't burn through them. Now, since this process happened, I've been attempting to contact John Rockham, which he doesn't return a phone call, and he never even has a conversation. So I don't know who he answers to, but he doesn't answer to anybody else. He's the most rude individual that I've ever encountered in my life. Now you have Dan Casella, he's a reasonable gentleman, and he's been having conversations with me. He also, uh, they've been asking me to sue you for like three months. Ago. That's the answer here. I wanted to work out an amicable agreement that we can move forward, and all I get told is sue the town. I mean, it's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life, but that's what they keep asking me, to sue you. So now, I've already showed Mario Hubei, your main building inspector, Jim Dalto, that I passed the test. They both agree. But yet, they're not issuing my license. Now, other false statements, because I have the minutes for the plumbing board, was that, now so far, just so you know, I passed the written three times, uh, four times, the drawing three times, and a practical three times. But the reason that I'm told I don't get my license because it got a, a pass them simultaneously. But after reading your minutes, that's not true. That's selective whenever Joe Martelli decides that he could do it. So I brought this to the attention to the town attorney, Mario Bouvet, who said to me, I happen to have a disability. So I put in for extra time because of my disability, which I'd rather not get into, which they told me they would honor. So now you had your town attorney tell me they were going to give me extra time and honor my disability on a test because it's a time test. It's two hours and 30 minutes to do 100 questions, 90 seconds each. So Mario said to me that he would give me a tutor, uh, a uh, monitor, an independent monitor, and it would take care of the room. Well, just so you know, that was November 2nd, and Joe Montilli was there and threw me out of the room. So, and his first words to me when I went in there was, I'm not talking to you. So this is who's representing you. And just so you know, I did tape them, so I could prove everything. And in reference to, uh, I have tape and pictures. So, you know, everything they say is a lie. And now that I'm getting the lies from the legal department, I filed a formal complaint against Mario Bouvet because he made a statement to me that he did not have one part. I sent you guys a letter in 2014 about my disability certified mail. He stated that he didn't have a copy of it until I told him that I sent it certified the date, and then he found it. But anyway, I've been being abused because of my uh, disability and discriminated against in this town now for five years. And I'm asking you as a board, if you could oversee it or have somebody oversee it, I really don't want to sue you, but all they do is tell me to sue you. I think my license should be issued, and I think it should be issued today. Again, I did administer the same test that he's giving me, so it's kind of laughable. But I'm sitting here getting beat up, and uh, it's not fair. And he made a comment to the town attorney of another municipality that he doesn't like me and said some very poor things. So I have that. I get an affidavit from the town attorney, corporate counsel from the, the local municipality as well, but I would hope that you guys could look into it. And I'd like to know who does oversee the plumbing board. Your time is up, sir. Mr. Rocky, you have someone who will take care of the test of that? <laughs> the building department oversees the public board, number one. Number two, I'm somewhat familiar with your case. Uh, you did get extra time, in on the, and I know that they cut you off before you thought you were finished, but on that occasion when they did that, and they should not have done that. And that's not Mr. Beauvais' fault, by the way, but they should not have done that. Uh, but you did pass. On, on, on that time, but at the same time that you passed it, you failed the lead wipe, and you have to pass both. Yeah, you have to pass both. So, so I understand that you've been offered to retake both tests in, uh, on, a, on a special day because they, they usually it's usually a, a long waiting period, and they've offered you the opportunity to take it in, in some day in December. And I trust, rather than go to litigation, you avail yourself of that. 
and, uh, and if you let me let me personally know what day, we'll make sure you have an independent monitor. Well, well that's what was said to me on November 2nd, and there was no independent monitor. It was I, no I understand. That the test was supposed to start at a quarter to, at a nine. Joe got there five after. I did the first test, which was supposed to be the only test, and then he took it from me at a quarter to ten, and had me start over. So I didn't get extra time. And a gentleman that's in there that wasn't disabled, he let, when he left, 15 minutes after he left, Joe ripped the book from me, ripped the test, and threw me out of the room. So if you consider that professional, after your town attorney promised me you have an independent monitor, and you think that's okay, and that's how you wrote it down. I think, I think the other, did you give us proof of your disability? I think yes, I did. For that too. Absolutely, I did. So they offered you, they offered you a, a specific day in December at your convenience to retake the test. Yeah, and, and just so you know, Mario Bouvet stated that uh, he was going to do all those things last time, but none of it happened. So how can I even, I, I can't trust you guys a bit. I already passed the lead wipe. I, I, I didn't know throw it July. Now you change the minutes. I got the minutes that revised. How do you revise the minutes after you make a statement? Don't you see what's going on? They said that they didn't have my card that I sent in for a disability. Then when I tell them I sent it certified, they found it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here that's just not holding water. And I sent you the whole board an email tonight with just some bullet points to your personal emails before I came so you guys can read up on it. And to ask me to take tests that I already passed multiple times, you're discriminating against a disabled individual that's already passed it multiple times. So that's ridiculous when you allow other people to only redo just the written or just redo just drawing or just redo the lead weight. But for me, you keep going, oh, you failed one part, start from one and do one, two, three. It's not right. You guys are abusing a disabled gentleman that made you aware of it, and I'm not going to put up with it. So I want my license, and I want an issue, and I, I've accepted nothing less. And I filed a complaint. I filed a complaint and I sent it to you, I reached out to the government internal department, and I really like what you said, Mr. Sweeney, about the internal investigator, because this place needs to be investigated. And I'm going to tell you, John Rockham has got to go, because he doesn't yeah. communicate with anyone. I don't know if he's referring to it or what, but personally, for five years being here, the gentleman's never even returned a phone call, an email, or even spoken to him. So, I just think you guys should be aware of it, because you seem like a good group of people. I've been coming, I watched Mr. Berkman, I watched Mr. Sweeney, I saw the passion in the board. I was going to speak the last three times, but they grabbed me at the door and promised me, you know, a trip to Vegas. And guess what? The trip to Vegas was two hours, they ripped the book out of my hand and threw me out again. And I got that on tape too. And I got it on tape from the town attorney telling me that I was going to have a special uh, monitor in the room with me, which allowed the guy that was abusing me to come in there and rip the book out of my hand. And now what you want to do is make me go back? I already passed it five times. And you don't do that to everybody. So why are you doing it to me? I didn't give a big campaign. I just don't get it. So anyway, I know if I'm hoping the court can look into it because I'm getting nothing from the legal department. I'm getting circled. And I'm getting nothing from the plumbing department. And I'm getting nothing from the building department but a runaround. So I hope that you guys could listen well, I'll read what I wrote you, and just so you all know, I have tapes, pictures, and everything I had an investigator on for a year and a half because I knew he was playing games with me. So, how often do we uh, do we offer the test? I'm, I'm, I don't know, but I know it's there. There's long. There's a long period after you take it and fail it. There's a, there's a waiting period, and they agree to shorten the waiting period for it. But I'm not sure. I know. Who knows? Who knows the answer to that question? Someone here can answer that? Yeah. The end of the hour here. Good evening, Councilmembers. Um, basically, what happens is after you fail the test, you normally have to wait six months to take it. And that is for you to study up, get, do what you need to do so that you can take it and hopefully pass it the next time. How, well, we, well, how, how many inspectors, how many many inspectors do we have? I'm sorry? How many inspectors do we have? We have, there's a five member board of the plumbing board that is the one that issues the test. And what happened was, um, first of all, a lot of, I'm not going to get into all the things he said because it's not true. 
Um, but we, as Mr. Ross said, we told him he just took the test in November, and um, I met with the town attorney's office, and we said we'd be more than happy to allow him a special day, not that the public board's not even going to be there, that we would have uh, somebody in the room with him that he could take the test in December. So we're doing everything possible that we can. That, and just so, for the record, we've never done this for anyone else. Yeah, but you already told me that you were going to do that November 2nd, and you ripped the book out of my hand. So why would I believe you now? First of all, I wasn't there, was I? You, no, you don't ever take a call or anything? I don't. Did, did I have my deputy contact you? Yes, I did. Okay? So my deputy was dealing with you. You, you have never contacted anyone. You need to be fired. You need to be fired. I used to administer the test for six years, and I never, I passed the test, and what they're doing to me is just crazy, because it, asking if anybody else, if every single person taking the test after they fail one part has to retake it, ask them that. No, it's selected. Is that, is that true? That's the town of Hempstead, honey. So, so sir, uh, the commissioner said that he's Selective going to give you an opportunity when? In December? Okay, in December, with uh, the board not present and with an independent monitor, and that you will respect the uh, requirements of his disability? Okay, sir. Or I was told that by Mario Bovet before November 2nd. But, sir, you've got the answer. You have December, the motivation? We'll, we'll give it one more try. Okay, December. I already passed them three times and multiple times. They, they only made one individual take one part. And just so you know, which I said to him, and he knows it, the guy told me that I failed my license because I melted through my product. I have pictures of it, daily time stamp from your garage, and I didn't melt through it, which he never had the courtesy to look at. But Mario and John Delco did it, and I didn't melt through it. So, well, again, that is not true. I asked you for the pictures. I asked you for a copy of the disability letter, and you've given me nothing today. I came in and brought the pictures to your town attorney and to your building inspector, as you requested, but you didn't show up for the meeting, though you said you were going.
even though there's the guy took the test away from him after he took it for the first 30 minutes, gave him a new one, and then took it away right after a regular person without a learning disability took the exam. So I think he spoke pretty well to it, and you heard Mr. Rod Camp uh, spew some more lies. But um, I just wanted to come up and corroborate his statement and let you know that we're not going to be accepting anything other than issuing his license, and uh, hopefully you guys can do the right thing. Thanks. Sabrina's essay. So what I'm saying is that after 
that, I still could not adopt a dog. So I, when I listened to you leave with such a good experience and listen to the newly elect, the process is flawed. I should have left with a great experience as well. I should have gotten the phone by now saying, you know, I know you felt upset, but we have some other dogs. That's the only point I'm making. It, it should not be just because you're sitting up there and I'm here that I can't get a dog. That's the only thing I'm, and I'm going to stay on this because again, we're taxpayers. We pay for the animal shelter. The dog should be put into homes that, you know, want a dog. I shouldn't have to, you know, jump through a thousand hoops to get a stray dog that someone else, you know, didn't want that I would love to be an animal, uh, you know, caring at this point. So that's why I'm bringing it. Whenever I'm going to hear this, I'm going to bring it forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boundaries. 
No, we don't. And what we have is it's, it's shameful. Really, it is. Well, the fire department. That's the fire department. Okay, it's, it's really um, egregious when you you know you have to resort to your fire department to use their money and put up entryway signs when we can't even get the town or the county to put up. In, uh, uh, we pay taxes. I know, but you remember that when they all of this started, the fire department said they wanted to put them up. Well, they put up a few, but we're, we're asking for more. I mean, you know, we're going down Front Street and, and entering into East Meadow, which also, I correct me if I'm wrong, East Meadow is a hamlet as well. A hamlet that's really uh, aggressively being developed. And uh, we're happy for them. But, you know, every time we mention something about why doesn't you need to go and get anything, or receive anything, or any sort of investment, we're told that Beauty Deal is only a hamlet. But so is East Meadow. <laughs> Well, that's what we hear. I'm just, listen, I have no reason to uh, not tell you the truth, okay? So we do, we're asking for uh, more attractive uh, entryway signs in meeting them. We were talking to the commissioner that's here. Commissioner, you heard that, right? Can you talk to him? You have another meeting with him? Is that the same one? Yeah, that's the same person. Okay, so that's what, that's what we're asking for. And we're <laughs> and uh, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, East Meadows and Hamlet as well, correct? If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but East Meadow, as far as I'm concerned, is a Hamlet. East Meadow, uh, to me, is looking more like a corporated village. Um, but I'm happy for them. But uh, Uni Deal is, uh, we want to be on, on parity as well. Thank you. <laughs> discrepancy between the highly advertised $23.5 million uh, you know, deficit being turned into a surplus and then Newsday came out stating that in fact there is a $6 million uh, deficit. So my point is I got transferred to someone else and um, the woman who I was speaking with told me that the reason the Inspector General was not going to be uh, why he wasn't in alignment with putting forth this proposal is because it was an $850,000 salary. So that was Cheryl Petrie, by the way. I don't know if she's here. Is she here? I'd like to meet her because uh, when I asked her if she worked for the town, she hung up on me. So this is just the typical kind of antics that have been occurring, which is why I'm thrilled there is you know, a new leader coming in. Um, does, <laughs> does the last budget that was passed, um, which I know Councilman Blakeman and Councilwoman Sweeney voted against, does the last budget that was passed jeopardize our current financial ratings in any way? Does anyone know? Is it control the actual rating? Control well, according to... Just a second, I'm asking for the person who's responsible, if he's not here, I will call 
Well, I'm going to speak anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So far, now that that budget's been passed, irregardless of the fact that I voted against it, I'm hoping that we don't get a downgrade because that would cost the town money. So I'm hoping that the rating authorities do not downgrade us and that um, we continue to take measures to improve our financial position. Right, and I think an inspector general could certainly help uh, you know, ascertain additional efficiencies. But while well, I have two and a half minutes left, Mr. Wah. Um, oh, it's okay, I got it. Um, the landfill cats. Um, I understand that several months ago, the Humane Society was finally able to access the property, although in a very planned, scheduled, and uh, I mean, might as well have, I, I, I don't understand why if someone's looking to really ascertain uh, the facts of the situation, they give the ample time to prepare and make it look perfect. Um, you know, and so if I'm a law enforcement officer and I get a call where there's a domestic violence situation, right, do I call the, the alleged abuser and say, I'm going to come next week on Tuesday between 9 and 10 in the morning, so here, I'm just letting you know. I mean, my point is this, it's been months, the Humane Society gave specific um, recommendations because they did see several issues that were not uh, amenable to good quality caring for these animals that were so well cared for for 10 years. And one of those were, you don't put blankets out for feral cats because blankets collect moisture and it will actually help them freeze to death. Um, there were no shelters, although originally there were shelters, but when they kicked out Stanley Lombardo and prohibited from accessing the property, they got rid of the shelters. Uh, the, you don't give kitty litter to outdoor animals because they have dirt, which is their natural kitty litter. So, but anyway, there were specific recommendations and, dis and instructions given. What I'd like to know is, is it possible now to schedule an unscheduled real audit? Can we let them in on an unannounced capacity so that we can really find out what's going on? Please stop my clock. They, they called us and asked us, or we called them and said, what would you like to come down? They told us when they were coming down and we left off with them. They'll welcome back at any time. They don't have to tell Anytime us. Anytime They don't have to tell us. They can come back whenever. And they'll be let in through the gate? If, if they identify themselves. Thank you very much. citizens who would like to address the board on any issue of concern. How come so often there's like four of you left? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we sit here to speak to you guys. I mean, I, listen, I know sometimes you have obligations, but lately there's only been four people. But today we have one, two, it's four. three, four, four and a half. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's 
very disingenuous. You have it on the website. And uh, Mr. Santino is acting like a sore loser. He wasn't here at the last one. And now he's not here today. And he's going to have an excuse the next time, which is the last time I think that he would be speaking. Am I correct? There's only one more meeting. I'm not saying anything that's wrong. It's the truth. It says that you, it, it actually says here that you guys are going to remain seated to hear comment from the individuals. Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to ask um, Ms. Sweeney and Mr. Blake, did you get your uh, money for the, the mailers yet? So you could do your uh, invitations to the constituents? You know how you get your budget for the mailers? For the mailers? Yes. We haven't got a budget for the mailers. And uh, uh, how long has that been? <laughs> Can you stop the clock, please? Three years. <laughs> it's been a while. We're working on it. Uh, are you being serious? No, I mean, no, seriously. How, about how long? Two years? Three years? We Three years in February. Uh, it, it's, yeah, it's two years in January. No, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay, so there's six people that sit on the board. Okay, so that's one third of you that are not getting the budget. Is that correct? Well, I, I want to be very, you know, uh, precise about this. Okay. I ask that my name and my picture be taken out of the mailers the ones that were so close to the election. So, I was it wasn't somebody that took it out. I actually asked that he take it out. Why is the clock ticking when Mr. Blake is speaking? Well, because I'm out of state. Oh, you make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. She still has to tell time. Okay, Mr. Blake, thank you. Uh, but have you gotten your uh, your budget for the ones you know when you have Our staff and everything? When, we're, we're working. Yeah, we're, trying, thing. we're trying to work work out staff issues amongst ourselves, and I'm hopeful and optimistic that we can do that. Okay, because, um, Mike, all right, here's, here's the question I want to get to. The bottom line is that two out of six people are not getting the budget. Uh, Mr. Ambrosino, are you getting your budget to do your mailings? I think you're under a misconception. Maybe explain it to me, I would I appreciate it. The way the budget works right now, in my opinion, we're brought on by the board in the past. It's a very fair and equitable budget. Here's the math on the budget. The budget is divided into six. Uh -huh. As of right now, Council will see Council will go the, is the is in the minority. She gets one sixth of the entire town board budget. The majority gets five sixths. It's an equal share. Every council person is treated exactly the same with their salary and their staff member. All right, let's not no, get into that because that is absolutely not true. The bottom line is that the, the bottom line is that certain council members have been treated differently. I have one staff member that works for me. When others have three, four, five, six, seven, it's an inequitable. It's illegal, and I'm willing to sit down with my fellow members of the board and work this out. But my district is not going to take second budget. place. Are you, the new, are you referring to the new budget, the budget that was just adopted, or we want to talk about old budgets? What do you, what do you ask? We're still on the old budget. We're still on the old budget. For, for, for two, you know, I'm you glad you brought it up, because for two years, operating under the old budget, where I was supposed to get a staff, I didn't get a staff. Which Why is the clock ticking? So let's not get into that. Why are we trying to keep talking? Just keep talking. Let's not worry about the clock. Just talk, Rory. Okay, here's my point. Here's my point. Forty percent, twenty and twenty is forty. For did you did they cut anybody in the printing department? Because none of your stuff got printed and none of your stuff got printed. For two years we had all this access. People working in the printing department. What are they doing? Picking their nose. Come on, seriously. No, think. Am I correct? Twenty percent. Twenty percent. You guys had nothing. I don't, I don't think that that's. I don't think that that's the real issue. The real issue is that. Okay. Why is the clock ticking when Mr. Blake is speaking? It's going to tick. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'll I'll think think it. It. You're not coming here to talk. 
here, you, you're not asking a question or whatever. You want to do a whole story or whatever. That's not right. That's not right. There are other people here who wish to speak as well. The real point is, the real point is that basically, in the past, staff has been pooled. And if you vote a certain way and you don't raise questions and you don't create issues, you get more staff than other members. And that's got to stop. My district is not going to be shortchanged. And I'm not going to go for that. But I would like to work it out amicably with the other town board members. And the Speaker of the Foundation, moving forward. Okay. That's it. I'd like to get to that. Yeah, I think moving forward, we can have a lot fairer distribution of staff. Um, Bruce, I think at one point you didn't. Oh, yeah, you were always going to finish, and that's it. You finished the council moment? Okay, that's it. Excuse me, uh, Felix? <laughs> this is Joe. What's the scout's name, are you? Michelle Hansen. What is it? Michelle Hansen. Michelle Hansen, is she appointed? Is she? Are you appointed? Okay, uh, public service. I'm questioning public comment. You know what? Let's not let's not it's denigrate. My time away, Mr. Well, wait, let's let's not denigrate the staff. Obviously, they have superiors who give them instructions. So let's not pick on them because they're just trying to do their job in a difficult situation. Okay, okay. okay. I appreciate it. GDG works for the clerk, not the goosey. Okay, and uh, the clerk should be independent of the board because that's why they're elected separately. But anyway, um, on uh, the camp anchor foil that I, you told me there was a stipulation, I downloaded 104 pages of the lawsuit. There is no stipulation, so there's no reason why you can't give it to me. Why aren't you giving me what Bill Mueller got in one minute? The it's quite possible that between the attorneys, the stip was not filed in court. That the attorneys. You can't, you can't decide among yourselves. Oh, of course you can. Yeah. Of course you can. Yeah, please. Of course you can. You can't make your own rules. You're going to violate FOIA? You're going to make two guys can make a rule? Hold on. If you tell me, hold on. All I said was the stip was between the attorneys. That that necessarily does not necessarily get filed with the court. Okay, that's that part of it. Now, you could, if, you could, if your argument is that two lawyers can't agree to violate FOIA, that's true too. But there seems to be a question. So we're waiting for the judge to make a decision on the preliminary injunction. And so we agreed with the other side that we would not release anything until the judge made his decision. But I agree with you, if, if a court said that you can't hold this back, you, you can't with, withhold the information, then no matter what the attorneys agreed to, would spoil and supersede that. The Malibu Dover contract is passed due. You told me you were looking into it two weeks ago. Are you going to put it in there? Yeah. Because no, that next day I told them to make sure they got it to get in yeah. Do me a favor, please call tomorrow morning. Call tomorrow morning, <laughs> just in case I don't remember, and we'll, we'll get it to you immediately. The guy who took the plumbing test mentioned he had evidence. Not one of you asked to see the evidence. Now, what did you ask? That, that's very strange. I, I always go by the documents. You may not like what I say, but everything I say is by the documents. And that's probably what you don't like because I tell what the documents say. But that's, that's uh, the problem. But he says he has evidence. Why didn't you say, bring the evidence to my investigator? Let, meet me in my office tomorrow and let me see your evidence. And let's see if it's valid evidence that you maybe he was legitimately cheated, he passed the test legitimately, and he really, what he said happened, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but he's saying he has evidence. Why do you give him at least the benefit of the doubt? That nobody, nobody offered him a lawyer. You're aware of his case. You're aware of his case. That, that, that's precisely why I supported having an inspector general so that 
people who felt that they were aggrieved could go to an independent investigator, not, not someone that was controlled by the board or by any member of the board, a supervisor, a council member, and that they would get a fair adjudication of their complaint. And I don't think that that's our role to make those decisions. I think basically when someone feels aggrieved, they have to have an independent person to go to to do the investigation to find out whether or not uh, that person is correct or whether or not our people are correct. I'm not going to sit in judgment of Commissioner Rotkamp without all the evidence, but at the same time, I'm not a prosecutor. I don't have the staff to do the research. That's something that an independent uh, inspector general should be doing and not us and not the commissioners because obviously if you have a beef against us or the commissioners you should be able to bring it to somebody who's independent of us and the commissioners. Yeah, but we, we spend a few hundred thousand dollars on investigators, you know, Minio has his own family here and you know they, we have a lot of investigators. Why wasn't that brought to one of the investigators? Why didn't it give the guy some guidance? But anyway, let's move on. Um, the short-term rental ban I believe per the all the hoopla with the you know the invalid why things should be tabled suddenly and then we change our minds as to why it was tabled. We didn't know why we tabled something. And uh, there is no description. This is the notice, unless it's the wrong thing, but in the packet, the notice just says to amend chapter 99 of the Code of Town of Hempstead in relation to the registration and permitting of property within the Town of Hempstead. That's the title of the law. That's not a description. Nobody reading that in the paper would say, hey, I got short-term rental property. I meant to get to this hearing. It, it, it gives no indication. And I believe, unless this is the wrong document, and it was published correctly in the paper with a different verbiage, that law is invalid per the consensus that seemed to have been, uh, you know, garnered here, you know, over the last few weeks in the paper. But anyway, move on to another thing. Um, has supervisor San has the Santino administration met with the Gillen transition team yet? I've met with the Gillen transition team three times. Okay. You have, but has Mr. Santino met with them? Do you know of that? I, I, I do not know that. I just know that generally those transition staffs and transition teams are generally not the public officials. Okay. Um, I agree with what Councilman Blakeman said regarding uh, you know, the Inspector General thing, but we don't have one yet. So this guy, if I took a test that took five hours or whatever it is to take five times, I'd be a little miffed. I mean, I don't think anyone else up here would be different than I, his, my feeling or that gentleman's feelings. And to give him such a lack of consideration, Joe Raj should have went and said that, come to our investigator, bring the information to my investigator, one of the videos, or if we have a bunch of investigators here investigating the animal shelter indefinitely, although they never find anything wrong, although there's a lot of things wrong, but at least go through the motions of pretending you care. You know, I mean, th th I, I was feeling for this guy. I mean, imagine five times taking the test that he already was, a, uh, I'm sure you can verify with his resume. Anyway, one more thing, I, this should have been a real quickie foil. I asked for John Rykamp's qualifications, his, you know, if records which would show that, that should be, what, two pages, three pages? I've been waiting a few weeks for that. I'm not sure what the problem is in scanning a couple of pages in. Um, can I get that foil? Should I be? Bill Model can get in two days. How does he get it in two days? I have to wait three pages. I have to wait weeks. I'll try, I'll try to track it. But, but how, how does Bill Muller get all those names? You see, if that was the names in that. If you the cavalry during the day, before the meeting, you'd have an answer. But I don't know what he, the answer he is. Does, he does not make a decision for the department. A lot of times he bypasses me because he can't get stuff. Like with the Arthur Prim, Arthur Prim refused to give me the date on a document that he produced. Uh, for six months. Six months. Six months. Six months. Mr. 
Mr. That's Patty why Patty you Patty Patty go to people. You say you go to people. Patty you go to people. Patty 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 you just don't answer. Oh my God, she's acting like a jackass. Calm down. She's acting like a jackass. Calm down. Yes. And speak. I will speak. Not shouting. Well, look at what she's doing to other Calm people. Calm down. The, the, she violated her constitutional rights. That cop was running while everyone else was speaking. That's not the norm. Bring it down a little. But you didn't okay. say anything. I'm calm. No, you're not. Are you calm now? I'm calm. Okay. Take a breath. Um, I'd like to say. On the corner of Front Street and Mindell Avenue, there's a Dominican restaurant that's on there. There used to be a sign where you, it would say, you know, parking. That sign has been removed since they put the new poles up there. Now, if somebody parks there, you can't no. make a, a safe left because you almost hit another car. Then parking, you get in the car. After they get made food, they get into the car. Oh, she's so even going to the think, restaurant. So when they park them right there at the corner. <coughs> so I don't like to go around to the She isn't supposed to. Like I said, she isn't supposed to. Yes, if you have any information, you have to try to tell me clear about it. That's going to change. The record in front of the is the state road. So we may have to reach out to New York State Department of Transportation to uh, determine what, what's missing. If anything on their part. If anything that we can do, we'll see what no. we should. Okay. And you have to have the street, right? We should step up front street. Up front street, we should step up front street. 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 We should step on the street that doesn't get help with their lights. Well, on Midwood Street in Uniondale, the first part of the block has no lights. Midwood Street, lighting? I know what that's what we're going to give up information to Kansas. Awesome. Midwood Street, you say? We have that. Also, um, as a taxpayer, I would like to say it's fine that everybody with their family at the ceremony installation. It's fine. But taxpayers are the ones who vote you guys in. So I would think you would have some type of area that the taxpayers would be able to sit and see. Utilize the hub. Utilize the Coliseum. Utilize Hostra. Have a bigger area. So that we can be because we voted you in. Well, I think you're a banker. But if you want to, if yes. you, excuse me, she's talking to you first. Please go We have relatives in the hallway. So if you want to come and get you know, us overfilled, then you can always watch it. Back in the corner, the same thing. We have some you know, monsters outside. But if it's not the same here, then you can check and come in. I, I just like to say, I, I don't think any of our tax Can I just say one thing? Like Bruce, Bruce, just for one second, Bruce. Can we please have some decor? I can't hear what's going on with all the, the, the disruption from the audience. Now, if you don't treat this body with respect, I'm not going to treat you with respect. I'm going to walk out. Just knock it off. Leave, leave, leave. leave. Not treating them with the disrespect. <laughs> we treat you with respect, but you don't want to do that. No, you don't. So anyway, if I could just continue. We got this beautiful facility, Camp Anchor. It's huge. Uh, it could accommodate a lot more people. It's got a big parking lot. You wouldn't have to look for parking. Um, it'd be a nice facility uh, to have our installation because you do have so many people that are being sworn in and with their families and friends here. You're not going to let the taxpayers in on it. Just we have a tradition in this country dating back to George Washington of allowing you know people to participate and, and come to the installation. And I just I think we need a bigger venue than, for, than this for the installation. That's just my one man's opinion. There's people will not be able to come to Camp Anchor because they don't drive. You know many of our seniors that. Well, how are they going to get here? They don't drive. I'll get some buses. 
All right, the next it's just person. a suggestion. Okay. Someone's got a better suggestion. Listen. That's fine. Listen. Okay, let us speak. You finish? Yes. Yeah. All right. Policy. Thank you, dear. Uber. The next person is Rich Schiller. Schiller. Rich Schiller. Good evening, I'm Richard Sharon, 167 Jefferson Avenue, Auburn Island, New York. Uh, I wrote on the sheet that I want to talk about the Basilico development, but I, I want to talk about something else. That's about your what now? Basilico development. Okay. But I want to talk about something that's even more important first. Last night I attended an Island Park School District meeting, and the subject of the meeting was the Barrett Power Plant and Sociari, Tax Sociari proceeding. Uh, the, the LIPA is seeking a 90% reduction in their taxes on the Barrett Power Plant, which sits in the town of Hempstead. I know you know about this, Anthony. Uh, if, if they're successful, that, that Barrett Plant provides 50% of the tax revenue for the Island Park School District, which is the smallest school district in Nassau County. If they're successful in that tax sociality proceeding, the school taxes in, in Island Park will double, will go up 100%. We're at the point now, the case has been proceeding for seven years. The school district has been fighting it. Nassau County has been fighting it. We're at the point now where it's almost to trial. Uh, the community is, is, is very, very concerned about this. Uh, the, the meeting was very well attended. Uh, I almost say panicked. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very serious situation. And we have, for the past five or six years, tried to get the support of of public officials, the town, of, the town of Hempstead County officials, to assist us in this fight, in this extremely important fight for the for the Island Park School District. And I'm asking you, as you all sit here today, to please work with the Island Park School District and other officials who are fighting this battle for the very survival of the Island Park School District. It's, it's extremely important uh, to everyone in the community, especially especially the children, uh, and it, 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 it is an existential threat. Uh, to our community. So if anyone wants any more information about that, I'd be happy to provide it, but I'm asking you now to, to, to please uh, help us. Rich, I just, if I, if I may, um, first of all, I've always supported the school district. Well, you um, weren't there last night. Yeah, well, I was going to get into that. Just to let you know, uh, the school district never invited me last night. Okay. You invited everyone in the community. They sent a letter to everyone. You should know about these things, Anthony. It's not a, it's not Rich, a Rich. We, the school board, the, community the school board, and the superintendent always finds my number when they need to let me know about something. We were not notified about last night. The, there was a meeting similar to this in August, and I had representatives there from not only my office, but the town attorney's office Your representative as well. knew nothing of the issue. It was embarrassing. Okay. Uh, Kaminsky was there, spoke on the issue. Your representative tried to speak. She knew nothing of the issue. It's, it's, it's a... It's a, a well, well, I disagree with her knowledge of the, the issue. Community, and the town of Hempstead has done nothing to support us. Well, I disagree with her knowledge on the issue. And there, there is nobody that can question the work and the support that I've given to the Island Park community, and I will continue to do so. We have been fighting this for eight years, uh, Councilman Desposito, and and and, and the, I haven't been on the board for eight years. Well, well you've been you've been involved in the community. Denise Ford was with us when we went to speak to the president of LIPA. I, I want to put everything in the past because we need we need everyone's help right now. It's an extremely you, serious. You have problem. my help. And if you, if you do, and I will speak to Dr. Ravino tomorrow, and I hope that in the future I am advised in the meeting so I can make sure that I can attend. And that's important. Thank you, Senior Council. Representatives of your fire department were there as well, so I can't, it's hard to believe that you want to work. Okay. I want to move on now to, to the Basilico development, which is, a, which is a catastrophe as well for the Harbor, for the Harbor Isle community. I've spoken of this before. In, in my opinion, the town of the Law Department did a horrendous job uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, it goes back a decade. Uh, the community came out in force. We, 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 we thought that we got relief. The Town of Hempstead Law Department messed it up. As a result, the developer was successful in, 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 his, in his legal challenges. It went all the way to the Court of Appeals. We've, Town of Hempstead has lost at, at every level. We're at the point now where Basilico is, Basilico is a developer. He's, he's, he's about to construct a I believe 150 unit rental complex. Well, he's not going to get anything because he's yet to submit building plans. 
or apply for any building permit. Secondly, I've reached out to Basilico probably over the last three weeks to a month, and I've yet to have a return phone call from them. Well, you've been promising for at least six months, and Mr. Mueller as well, to speak to the community. Mr. Mueller told me personally that he had a plan to, to address this, and, 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 he, and he said to me that he, the community would be informed of that. This is, all, this is more than six months ago. We still don't know. People are literally, you know, worried. They, they, they're in the process of considering to sell their house in this area. It's a, it's a very serious thing, and the town of Hempstead screwed it up. Mr. Rye, your law department, I don't, I don't know what happened, but it was a brief area of the law department. Screwed it up. We're at the point now where they're going to build this, and we don't know. I've been told that there's some plan, but it appears that there isn't. I don't know. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Mueller told me that, that I'm talking about the plan the announcement. What's, excuse me? I'm, I'm referring to plans from the builder. Right, but I'm referring to, the, to the, a strategy on the part of the town of Hempstead to address this issue, to protect the community as they, as they intended to, but failed, because the legal department failed. Uh, and, 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 that, and that brings me to my last point. In my, in my opinion, Mr. Rock, the, it, it, the legal department's representation at the last meetings has been severely improper or deficient. Uh, it, my understanding is you, you, you're, you're to represent the entire board, not the supervisor. I sat here and I watched meetings where it was obvious that a strategy was conducted with yourself and the, and the town clerk in advance without the knowledge of the other board members and, and, a, and, a, and a plan was executed to deprive the board members of the opportunity to speak, to table items well, without notice. And I, I just think it's wholly improper for uh, the town attorney to have acted in such a manner. I just want, I just want, to, I just want to let you know that I, I just think that was wrong. I wasn't going to speak because all I can think about is the future and sieging this whole building and cleaning it up and sweeping out the town and dropping off back boxes for people to pack up and leave. And everything that I heard tonight was true. The legal department has been a scheme to defraud the public at best. And after I heard Ms. Gira speak about the animal shelter, I wanted to mention that I too was very happy to see Councilwoman and Supervisor-elect Gillen at the shelter. However, at that time, I was getting many calls and text messages from staff that were very upset because Mr. Pastore was prepared for that event and suddenly the doors were getting cleaned up and out in the exercise pens, which does not happen. So I strongly suggest moving forward, no matter who is in charge, that you make some surprise visits and uh, show up unannounced because it's more than just visiting the shelter. Um, it's important to check on these animals and, and how they're being taken care of. Um, and I, with all due respect to you, Councilwoman, I have the utmost respect for uh, Laura Gillen for not posting a picture that Michael Pistori jumped into, uh, I'm told uninvited, because that would have sent a chilling message to the people that he has harassed and bullied and discriminated against and shut out and silenced in the same way that some of you were. So again, I, I thank you for being there, but I also appreciate that uh, Mr. Pistori is nowhere to be found on Laura Gillen's Facebook page. Good night. James Allen Jr. Oh, did you speak already, sir? No. You sure? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I think you okay. is. I think that's saw the same name, man. Last name. Oh, okay. Uh, James Alphys, uh, 371 Garden Street. West Islip, New York. Uh, I actually just came up here because I noticed you asked Mr. Bardock one question, which I don't think was actually answered. <coughs> I was hoping we could go over that question with Mr. Bardock. 
Mr. Uh, yeah, Rockkamp. <laughs> I didn't think you were asleep. But yeah, Mr. Rockkamp, I wanted to ask Mr. Rockkamp the one question that uh, I don't think he had the chance to answer before. Um, it was in previous examples when people have failed one part of the test, did they have to take the entire test over or were they allowed to just take that one part? And I was hoping he could come up and answer it. Make sure we can answer that, please. Also, the clock is running. I know, it's never run. No, don't let it run. That's I unfair. Feel it. it seems selective. Uh, I've seen it so for some people, and then Listen, I'm not run. everybody has to have a right to speak, and we're not going to stay here till 2 o'clock in the morning. Why not? I, I'm not. You get paid for it. That's so un unconstitutional. Stop the clock. Yes, basically what happens is. Quiet! Quiet. You have to get a certain grade on part one before they'll allow you to take part two. So uh, I believe it is, and I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it's 65. If you get a 65 or above on part one, then you can go to part two. If you don't get that, then you don't, you're not allowed to take part two. So the question was, if you passed part one and part two, this is just an example, not those specific parts, but you fail part three, do you, in every single case, do you have to go back and take all three parts over, or have people in the past been allowed to just go take that part that they failed? No, they, if, if they pass part one, part two, and fail three, it's a combined average of all three parts. So if, the, if your average is below, I believe it's 72 total, then you would have to take the entire test over. Okay, and if it's above 72 total, then you only have to take the one part that you failed? No, no, no. You, you take three parts. All three parts, when you're done, get averaged together, and you have to get a 72 or above, and then you pass the test. If you pass part one, you pass part two, and you fail part three, and your average is below 72, you would have to take the whole series over. You have to take, you fail the test. It's a three-part test. Okay, so the reason I'm asking this is, in previous uh, episodes, we have minutes from multiple exams where people have failed the overall test, but they were not forced to take all three parts over again. They were only <laughs> permitted to take one part of the test over, yet for some reason, every time my That's father fails, they make him go through the entire process. Now, the, most, the most recent time he took the test, he passed the first two parts, and now they claim he failed the uh, lead bite, right? They said he bled through. But then, in his recordings, he actually has town members or board members cooperating the fact that from the pictures he did not believe through. And my question is if people in the past, when they failed the overall test, have had the, the option to just take that one part over, why is it he's not getting that same uh, option? I know of no person that was able to do that, that was able to do that. Um, those minutes were supplied by uh, the plumbing board. I'm more than happy to take a look at them and, 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 and uh, look into it. But, to my knowledge, that has never, ever happened. Read the name. All right, that's it. Okay, thank you. We still have time left. But you're not, if you're asking, they're asking you to read names. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to do that. Okay, thank you. These are public minutes. I'm sure you guys all have so, Don't read them here. Um, no, I won't. Uh, my other point that I want to bring up is that he is also licensed in, I believe, two or three other towns for the plumbing test. And I just, I just find it to be ridiculous that He's been going through this for five years. And I appreciate all of your time. I know you probably all want to go home and have dinner and say hi to your family. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I might better order out the pizza and coffee and a Pepsi. First of all, if I heard it right, if I'm being told that we are getting respect from the dais in front of me and that we give respect, utter falsehood. And besides, we give you the sound effects, we give you whatever you want. Senior Councilwoman Guzman, I've given you your respect that you have been disrespectful to me and others in this audience, and that is unacceptable. And think, I am sorry you are cutting me off while I am speaking. I am speaking now the same way you have told other people when you were speaking 
not to cut you off. And as you said, this is my time. You don't want to stop the clock, so I'm going to keep on talking. All right. I'm going to keep it moving. Now, I am hoping that, first of all, to even read in the paper that the chairman of the Republican committee would have supported the proposition to give funding to the transitioning <laughs> committee, but the majority of this board voted against it, does not speak to me that you are looking to make this a seamless transition. And it also seems that there are some people who are acting like a sore loser when they, in fact, were reelected. I have a problem with that because we're going to go into 2018 with a positive attitude, and I firmly agree and support my fellow resident. Diane Madden, because we need to sage this place, pray it up, and do whatever we need to do to clean out the atmosphere. The atmosphere of intimidation has to stop today. It needs to stop today. Whenever you're to be completely disrespectful of the, of the request of the incoming, the elected supervisor for the town of Hempstead. There was an elected supervisor. Some people may be trying to perpetrate that role at the moment, but there's an elected supervisor for the town of Hempstead, and she respectfully requested the change to have a meeting on the installation of January 2nd, and to have a meeting to accommodate residents of this township at 7 p.m., and to, at least to my understanding, that one person, okay, because one person has their own personal obligation because I don't see where any of us are going to be invited to this party. And anybody can get together with their family all the time. We are taking time away from our own families to be here to come to these meetings. And the previous meeting before the election, when folks did not think it was a problem for us to come back twice to have our feelings hurt, that on the one day when we get an opportunity to get a new day in a new way that one person is going to be able to influence the votes to change the request of the incoming supervisor elect, that is highly disrespectful. And I do hope that there will be changes in the budget because first of all, for someone to say in this, in this body, in this room, that to have an inspector general which we desperately need, not another relative, not another political hack, but we need an inspector general who is going to look over the processes of contract. And do you find something amusing, senior councilwoman who's me? Because you're not looking at me, you're supposed to be presiding. But if you want to keep looking around, I'm going to keep right on talking. When the bell rings, the brother sounds, and the gentleman can come off the wall and try to remove me if they want to. That is all okay with me. But I'm hoping that we get someone who can look over this budget because if I recall, the current supervisor must have had at least 20 people on his own staff. I believe there were three executives, there was a chief of staff, there was an executive assistant to the chief of staff. We could save money right there and we need in a forensic accounting to look at where the actual millions of dollars that this township has spent or continues to spend in advertising. We know that those costs were spread across, and clearly they were not spread across and divided among the council members in their budgets. We already know that. So we need a forensic accounting. We need to table the issue of an inspector general to have people with clear heads, a real vision, and a true commitment to the taxpayers. And I'm almost done. So, the last thing I want to talk about, again, are these hidden positions that are going, that are being tucked in to the township in various and sundry locations. Let it be noted, folks, that representatives from various communities in the township are watching. We are foiling, we are asking questions, we are coming together to find out where our money is actually being spent, and in most cases, being misspent. And I was hoping that Councilman Esposito would be here because I am very curious to see what kind of plan he has in place for those many residents in Island Park who are suffering because we still have residents in Baldwin who are, yes, it's started again and I'm still talking. <laughs> and in Baldwin, come on and start me. Come on and start me. 
Come on, and I hope it's going into news that it's being escorted at my time and the people of the other residents have not Go do it, story. do it. Come on and escort me out. Come on, let's do it. Come on and do it. Come on and do it. Hey, hey. First of all, shorten our ass. Everybody's got to get down. Let's go. 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 Let
I go to radio shops all over the world. I'm right now looking at the town of Hempstead. I'm looking to buy a piece of property to build a manufacturing plant based against five of my patents. And 51% of my employees are going to be vets from Operation Desert Storm, from Vietnam, men and women in wheelchairs, and men and women who are blind. I'll tell you why. They're the best workers. You handle the disabled, they'll help you. Also, the Veterans Administration is willing to finance me open-ended at no interest to build my plant. Uh, near Russia and Costco, I'm looking at a piece of land. So I've got some fantastic things I'd like to do for the town of Hempstead. For Mr. Santino, who I tried to run against for supervisor two years ago, has a vendetta. And I've been through many, many bad situations. I like the town to try and get me back into my house. They took my dog, Mendel. Mendel saved my life a year and a half ago from a mid-air plane crash. I took off Republic Airport, my Cessna. I went south. I was going to work screw up to 9,500 feet, go over Long Island. And when you're at 9,500 feet at night, in a little way plane, and you see the lights in Manhattan, and you see the stars, you can't be any closer to God and I'll live in a box with a propeller. What happened one night, I was student pilot for 36 years. One good eye. My dog was with me in the car. I wasn't going to leave Mendel in the car. I said, Mendel, come on. I can't take any passengers, but I can take a pooch. I put Mendel in the airplane. He took off. I was climbing through 3,000. He goes crazy. I looked at the right. Oh my god, a piper went right across my body. If I had to dive my airplane, I wouldn't be here. The dog, the Sheltie, saved my life. Somebody took my dog. I have an idea. It's my next door neighbor. The feds are looking in. They wanted to take Mendel to Oklahoma City and run tests on Shelties. If a Sheltie has the ability, I may go over the clock, I'm sorry. If a Sheltie has the ability to recognize an aircraft in flight, there may be a pooch in every cockpit. Can I keep on going? Is that okay? Okay. There would be a pooch in every cockpit, a commercial jetliner. The other thing was, I wanted to donate to the town of Hempstead an amateur radio ham station. I donated to schools all over the United States, ham radio stations. I was told, don't leave to a library. They have no time to put a ham radio station in City Hall. I was going to take one month and teach anybody who wanted to become a ham radio operator to operate the station in case of emergency. Tube equipment, not solid state. So God forbid, if we had an EMP, we have communications on the town of Hempstead. And it was all shot down. I think I took my home in it. Please give me back my house and my wife. That's all I ask. Thank you very much for your time.